Hello and welcome to my Ultra Life. Today I have just one question for you. Why are we so fat? Most of us are overweight or just face it, we're fat. I'm fat, you're fat, your sister's fat, your mom is fat, your brother's fat, your dad is fat, my god your dog and cat are fat. But why are we so fat? That is the 300 billion dollar question. I wanted to know why you're so fat, so I did some research. And since I'm a considerate guy, I'm going to share with you what I learned. According to the Centers for Disease Control, 69% of all adults over the age of 20 are overweight. Nearly 36% or 87 million of us are obese. And adults over the age of 60 are more likely to be obese than younger adults. So as you get older, you really got to watch it. And I'm not even talking about the kids yet. There are over 12.5 million kids that are obese. Being overweight isn't just about looking good or body image. Being overweight just is not healthy. Fat people have higher risks of heart disease, diabetes, stroke, osteoarthritis, joint problems, and certain types of cancer. It's expensive to be sick. The estimated medical cost to treat obesity was $147 billion in 2008, and it's approaching $200 billion in 2014. Hey, I know we're all going to die, but I prefer to be living as many healthy years as possible, wouldn't you? I mean, let's face it, getting older sucks, but if you can do something to get healthy, stay healthy, keep living and moving longer and later in life, wouldn't you prefer that to a walker, an electric scooter, or worse? I've seen way too many people get to the age of retirement when they should really be enjoying their life, but because of health issues, they're just too sick or, or aren't physically mobile to have a good quality of life. You know you're fat. I know I'm fat, but I went looking for a good definition just because I wanted to confirm it. So if you're with, uh, if you check with the CDC, the Mayo Clinic, the World Health Organization for a definition of being overweight, they all point to the BMI or body mass index. I did a three part series a few years ago called the food pyramid and BMI. So you can search on uh, my ultra life BMI on YouTube. If you want to check those out, see a younger, skinnier me. The formula for BMI is your weight divided by your height in inches squared times 703. A BMI of 18.5 to 24.9 is normal. If your BMI is 25 to 29, you're overweight. If your BMI is 30 or higher, you're an obese person. For example, if you're 5'4 and weigh 174 pounds, you are obese. If you're 5'9 and weigh 203 or more, you are an obese person. My BMI is 32 right now. I'm a, a little portly and I'm considered obese. While BMI isn't the most accurate, it is the best and quickest gauge of fatness. So you can do the math, but I have an even faster method. Go look in the freaking mirror, come on. You know you're fat, but why? Why are Americans so fat? Is it because America is a richer nation with more choices? Is it because we can afford to eat more? Well, that could be the reason. Did you know that the U.S. has been the country with the highest obesity rate in the world for the past several years? But I do have some good news. We are now the country with the second highest obesity rate. Mexico just beat us. Some of the other countries in the top 10 of fatness are Micronesia, Dominica, Tonga, Kiribati, and the Cook Islands. These don't sound like countries that are the wealthiest countries compared to America, but maybe they are rich in their diets. Ha. Some of the countries with the lowest obesity rates in the world are Japan, Thailand, Indonesia, Korea, Romania, France, and Honduras. And these aren't the poorest countries, so I don't think living in a poor country or a rich country makes the biggest difference. What is different is the diet and the culture. And as you might expect, countries with the lower obesity rates also have lower rates of disease and greater longevity. Are we fat just because Americans aren't aware of the problem? We don't know that we're fat and big. Maybe we should diet more. According to Market Data Enterprises, an independent research company, Americans spend over $61 billion a year on weight loss. They report that 82% of those dollars are spent on do-it-yourself diet plans, such as over-the-counter diet pills, meal replacements, diet books, and diet websites. 
Weight loss chains such as Jenny Craig, Weight Watchers, and Nutrisystems got more than $3.4 billion. And multi-level marketing plans took in another billion of your bucks. I'd say that if Americans are spending over $61 billion a year, we are certainly aware of the problem. So we've tried dieting, but dieting isn't working. So it's not the answer. Could the reason be we're fat because we don't go to the gym and work out? Well, gym, health, fitness clubs, they brought in over $26 billion last year. And there's over 30,000 facilities around the country with more than 52 million members. Do you have a gym membership? Have you been lately? You know, I must admit there was a time I hadn't gone to the gym for so long, I forgot the combination of my lock. I had to throw it away and get a new one. And I didn't work out that day. The U.S. population has 316 million people and only 52 million join a gym. I wonder how many of these members actually go to the gym? Well, I guess those that do work out are the healthy minority. More of us should go to the gym, but we're just not. I know there's lots of you who don't like the gym and you say, well, I'm going to work out at home. Did you know that you spent over $2 billion on home fitness equipment? That treadmill was not meant for hanging your clothes on. So let's do the numbers. Treating diseases that are the result of obesity cost almost $200 billion a year. We spend $61 billion a year on dieting. We go to the gym, some of us, and we spend $29 million on gyms and fitness centers, and $2 billion a year on fitness gear. That's nearly $300 billion a year spent by Americans each year to lose weight and get fit. Yet 69% of us are still overweight, and 36% of adults are obese. So even after spending hundreds of billion dollars a year, we're still fat. Something is not working. And my point is not to focus on the money being spent. My point is that people are trying different methods to lose weight and battle obesity. But it's just not working. Maybe the government should help. But be careful what you wish for. They might just start helping us if we can't learn to control ourselves. Because obesity is a enormous like gigantic public health concern, and especially with the government getting deeper into the healthcare business. So as you might expect, there are many government agencies involved in studying and preventing obesity in children and adults. Let's just run through a few of those government agencies. Just, just a few. You've got the Department of Health and Human Services, and they oversee the Administration for Children and Families, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Administration on Aging, Health Resources and Services Administration, the National Institutes of Health, the Office of Women's Health, the Office of Indian Health Services, the Office of Public Health and Sciences, which oversees Office of Adolescent Health, the Office of the Surgeon General, Office of Disease Prevention and Health Promotion, the President's Council on Fitness and Sports, the Office of Minority Health, the Office of Women's Health. Wait, I, I thought we already covered women's health. I mean, the, the list is exhausting. And we haven't even gotten to some of the big ones yet, like the USDA and the FTC and the FCC, who's supposed to get the word out on all these programs for us. And these agencies, they all have sub-agencies. You know, if you go to the USA.gov website and search the word obesity, you get over 6,880,000 results on studies and reports on obesity. It's incredible. Even the First Lady got into the act beginning of February 2010 by launching her Let's Move campaign with the goal of solving the challenge of childhood obesity within a generation so that children born today will reach adulthood at a healthy weight. Let's Move.gov involves the Department of Education, the Department of Interior, and the Department of Health and Human Services. With all those departments, there's no report on the campaign's results. But they do have a song. Move Your Body by Beyonce Knowles and Swiss Beats.
So do-it-yourself diets, weight loss programs, and diet books, they're not doing it. And most of us don't go to the gym. And the government is studying the issue and implementing programs while the obesity rate continues to increase. So what's the solution? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, wait, you thought that's what this was all about? You thought I had the answer? Come on. If 6,880,000 articles on USA.gov haven't provided the answer, I don't think I have the answer. Ask yourself, why are you so fat? Do you know the answer? Well, I know that if we don't take responsibility for ourselves and solve this issue on our own, I can assure you the government will be compelled to help it, help us and solve it for us. Banning big sodas in New York is just the beginning. The government can go a lot further if they feel they need to for our own good. Are you willing to give up your personal freedom? It seems like we've already lost our self-control. So what do you expect? So what is the solution to obesity? I don't know what the answer is for everybody, but I do have some ideas and I'll be sharing those in future posts. I think we need to find the solutions that work for each of us individually. If we work together on solving our own obesity step by step, we'll learn what works for each of us. And I hope that we can use the My Alter Life site as a forum to share ideas on what works and what doesn't. Now, what makes My Alter Life better than the hundreds of other health and fitness websites out there? You do. You, you and me together. We can do it together. We make it better through our effort to lead ultra lives. By motivating and encouraging ourselves to reach our goals, we make it better. And if we lose weight, get fit, stay fit, and improve ourselves, then we become examples and an inspiration for others. Hopefully over time, we might just help others lead ultra lives too. Watch for future posts where I'll work to answer the question of why are you and I so fat? And more importantly, how you can go from fat to fit. And I'm going to be running and swimming and biking and eating my way from fat to fit. I hope you'll join me along the way. We'll be talking about goals. We'll be working on ways to achieve those goals, helpful tips, and much more. So I hope you follow along on my journey to lead an ultra life. My ultra life. Now be sure to check the written version at myultralife.com for links to all the references. And while you're there, take a minute to register as a My Ultra Life member. You can post comments, photos, post your goals, progress, achievements, form groups, join groups, and more. And it's all free. And hey, if you like this video and want to see more, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And while you're there, rate and comment as well. I'd love to hear from you, and I'll do my best to respond to every comment. Hey, today's shirt is from the Challenged Athletes Association. It's a great organization that raises funds for challenged athletes. No, not, not athletes like you and me. I mean, we have our challenges, but think about competing without an arm or a leg. It's a great cause, and they've got some great fundraising events. So look for one in your area. And if you have a charity or an event to promote, send in a shirt. I'll wear it and promote it on this channel. For those of you who made it all the way through, thanks for watching. I know this was a long one. I've had an ultra time making this video, and I hope you have an ultra life too.